What if you could grow a vital antidepressant right in your garden? These are broad beans or fava beans if you're in the US and they're really rather remarkable. And boy oh boy have I got a treat for you because we're off to Cambridge University to meet a scientist who's at the cutting edge of research and believes that these hold the key to better mental health. By the end of this video, you'll see why scientists are starting to see this unassuming bean in a whole new light, how it boosts dopamine, how easy it is to grow them, and we'll even look at some tempting ways to introduce more of them into our diet. Broad or fava beans are one of the hardiest beans out there. So even in a cooler climate, this is a great bean to sow right now to give one of the earliest crops for harvesting from late spring onwards. Now there are a couple of ways to get this beany bounty started. Direct sowing into the ground or sowing into plug trays. And I'm gonna show you both. If you've got well-drained soil and winters don't get too harsh where you are, and by that I mean about uh, 15 Fahrenheit or minus 10 Celsius as a minimum, then it's well worth growing them and sowing them directly outside. Now, I like to plant them on a block formation and a cane can help you get those nice straight lines and we're looking for a spacing of about eight inches or 20 centimeters between seeds in each direction. And I'm gonna plant them about two inches or five centimeters deep. These are really beautifully chunky seeds. They're just so satisfying to plant. It's like tucking little marbles into the soil, tucking them away and all that promise to come. Now I've improved the soil here with just a barrow load of well rotted compost with a bit of leaf mold mixed in as well just any sort of organic matter that'll help to gently improve the soil for your beans but the magic thing about beans is that they team up with bacteria in their roots to actually fix nitrogen from the air and create some of their own fertility that's pretty amazing sowing beans like these can't help but put a big old smile on your face and I really can't wait for you to meet this expert at Cambridge University who's going to show us some other scientifically proven ways that these beans are really good for our mental health. I mean honestly who'd have thought that this could be so good for this? Once these beans come up, I actually want them to grow quite slowly. The ideal size for fava or broad beans to sit out the winter is as short, stubby little seedlings. Those are much more tolerant of cold weather. What happens with taller kind of soft and sappy growth that you sometimes get when you get a mild winter is that when you do get a cold snap, it's suddenly very susceptible to that cold and can easily get kind of killed off. So, there's a bit of an art to picking your time for sowing really. But if these do come up and then we do get them quite long and sappy and we get that cold spell, well, I'll be on hand to cover them with a cloche or row cover to protect them from the worst of that cold. But what if you've got a heavy clay soil or your winters are especially cold and wet? Well, it may be safer to start your beans off in large plug trays or small pots like this. I like to use deep plug trays or root trainers like this. Now, fava beans send out quite deep roots, so having this extra space for them to really get those roots down will help them to withstand the cold of winter. Now, if you don't fancy forking out on extra kit, you could just use toilet roll tubes. They work just as well. Just pack them into a tray, fill with your potting mix as usual, and sew into those. Now, I'm just using an ordinary all-purpose potting mix to fill my root trainers here. And it's a bit claggy and wet, but that's fine. This will drain off nicely. And I'm getting it so I'm filling them so the seeds will be about two inches or five centimeters deep. And then just pop in the seeds, one per plug like that. And then we will cover them over and give them a light water to set them on their way. Trays of sown broad beans will need to be kept in a cold frame, an unheated greenhouse, or even just a nicely sheltered position outside. They'll grow away and then they can be transplanted in spring at the same spacings as those direct sown beans. So that's eight inches or 20 centimeters apart in both directions. Now, if you're sowing in a really cold climate where the ground freezes solid for weeks on end, then I would just ditch autumn sowing altogether and keep your chilly feet warm by the fire, ready to sow in early spring. Those spring sowings will soon catch up with us autumn sowings and you'll only be a few weeks behind. 
Me, well, being on the cusp of somewhere between mild and cold, I make a sowing both outside and in the greenhouse. That way, if the outside beans get clobbered by a really cold snap, I've always got my indoor sown beans to fall back on. And if those fail, and that has happened before, no bother at all, I'll just make a sowing in early spring. But what's that I hear? Father beans aren't a patch on climbing summer types. Poof, not on your Nelly. Let's head on over now to the student allotments of King's College, Cambridge University, to meet Dr. Nadia Radsman, who's been devoting her life to researching and promoting these truly awesome beans. Dr. Nadia, thank you so much for having us here today. Now, the million dollar question, what is so special about fava or broad beans? So broad beans is historically has been grown here in the UK for a very long time. And one thing that is very special about it is that it can fix a lot of nitrogen for the soil. Mm -hmm. And uniquely, it has this compound called L-DOPA which is the precursor to dopamine, the happy molecule of the brain. So if you consume it, it can improve our mental health. Literally is a happy bean. It is That's a happy incredible. bean. incredible. Yes, <laughs> yes. So you say they go all the way back to the Iron Age in Britain, at least. Yeah. Uh, I know they're kind of native to sort of North Africa and West Asia and so on. So have they been grown uh, all over Europe and, and, and these areas? Historically, we know that it is first domesticated within the Futa Crescent in the Middle East. Okay. And then it eventually came to Britain. Mm. And we know that from archaeological findings that we have seen charred remnants of broad beans right. in Roman camps. So this is where we know that it mm. has been grown here since the Iron Ages. This really giant yeah, bean. It's so plump, isn't it? Exactly. This, is the, this is the beauty here. Yeah. Yes, this is a very accessible protein mm -hmm. source. And as I mentioned too, it has the L-DOPA that could prevent depression. Has there been any uh, scientific work done on this with empirical evidence? And Yes, what we know of recently is that there are six types of depression. And one of the six types, it is due to the inflammation of the frontal lobe of the brain. And just by consuming L-DOPA as a drug, it can actually eliminate it. From there, we can also allude to the fact that if we consume food that is high in L-DOPA, then we can also help with mental health issues mm. too. It's such a beautifully simple idea that we can eat our way out of this or as a preventative. Yes, exactly, Amazing. exactly. So there are a couple of dishes that I would like to show you. Oh, Great. fantastic, yeah. yes, please. <laughs> What we have here is roasted fava beans, so okay. broad beans, just uh, roasted in the oven. Wow, they look yeah. so good. They got that lovely kind of crunchy look. Yeah, mm. with a little bit of spice and, mm. and cumin. Cumin and mmm. Yeah. Oh, so good. <laughs> These are like potato chips or crisps. Right. Is it olive oil on it? Mm hmm. So it's kind of, um, there's nothing really bad in there, is there? And also, it's high in protein. It's a high protein snack mm. that you can just make at home. So that would keep you fuller for longer, I'm guessing, <laughs> rather than. Like crisps, that's yeah, going to like be it's, much it's more satisfying. It's way better than the crisp, I would mm. say, yes. And yeah. I'm guessing this is some sort of broad bean dip? Yes, it's pretty much broad beans that have been blanched in okay. uh, boiling water for a few mm. minutes yep. and then just blitz it with yep. olive oil, mm. garlic, okay. cilantro too. Mm. Do you know what? <laughs> I'm loving the garlic in this. It's like yeah. really good. Oh, it's so, I could, I could just... Leave me alone with this all day. Yes. I can, <laughs> this is so great. one Ooh. thing that is really nice too is actually it can be an alternative to avocado spread on your toast mm. in the morning. Never mind smashed avocados. This yes, is where it's at. Exactly. This, is, this is we're trend setting yes, right now. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> well, I'm blown away by the versatility and the real compelling case for growing broad uh, beans or fava beans. And incidentally, the Broad and Mind project that uh, Dr. Radsman mentioned, I'll include a link to it in the description down below. Now, it's been great being here. It's the student allotments, isn't yes, it? Yes, yeah. student allotment of the King's College, Cambridge. Cambridge, what a prestigious place to be. Well, thank you for having us today, Dr. Radsman. Really appreciate thank it. You. Thank you. Thank you. Goodness me, if you weren't sure about growing broad beans before, I suspect you probably are now. These are truly beautiful, bombastic, brainy beans of the first degree. 
So let's fast forward a bit. Your beans are up and you're positively drooling at the prospect of those beautiful pod protected beans. Well, once they are up, there really isn't much that needs doing to them. Just keep them weed free. And if you've sown into plug trays or pots, then plant them outside as soon as the soil warms up a little in early spring. Fava beans grow quite quickly into tall bushy plants once they get going, but it does mean that we'll need to offer them some sort of support. Now I just thrust canes into the corners and sides of the bed and then run a couple of rows of string parallel to each other just to hem those beans in and stop them flopping over in windy weather. There are also dwarf varieties available which are perfect for more exposed gardens or indeed for growing in containers. Beans of all types are loved by black bean aphids, but one trick with fava beans is just to pinch out the very top of the plants once the very first pods have set. Now aphids love the soft, supple growth, so by removing it, you're denying them somewhere to settle. And as a bonus, it will also direct more of the plant's energy into swelling those beautiful pods that we're after. Don't waste those pinched out tops though, they are edible and a fantastic lightly steamed or indeed tossed into a salad. By late spring or early summer, those pods will start to swell and that's your cue to get harvesting. Now you can pick them quite young with the beans inside still quite small but nice and sweet or let them mature into chunkier beans with that lovely deep earthy flavour. As Dr. Radsman showed us earlier, they're fantastic turned into all sorts of recipes and snacks. Great for the body, most definitely the mind, and almost certainly the soul. And if you've got lots of beans, well, they freeze really well too, either raw or lightly blanched and then popped into the freezer. Let me know in the comments below whether you'll be growing these bountiful beans and what plans you have for them in the kitchen. In the meantime, if you haven't done so already, be sure to give our garden planner a try and set yourself up for your best growing season yet. You can try it for free using our seven day trial and there's no need to put in any payment details or anything like that. I'll catch you next time.